our osmosis system has finally arrived home. Our brand new three-stage reverse osmosis system, which includes a water membrane and an anti-sediment filter and a carbon filter. And that's what you see here. I've already installed the membrane. Then there are some fittings for what's it called? The faucet. And you can attach it to your regular faucet without having to replace it all the time. There are three different colored hoses, so they're color coded and there's a bit of assembly. So uh, we're really looking forward to that. This osmosis system is what you'll use when you start designing your own water. You reset the water with this. You remove all minerals and salts, pesticides, everything, bacteria, the whole lot. On the box here, it lists the most important information. Otherwise, I just recommend that you follow our videos on our brewing blog and of course also the video clips under the actual product. But I can tell you, for example, that one of the filters lasts for almost 6,000 liters of water. The sediment filter lasts for 11,000 liters of water and the membrane lasts for 30,000 liters. So it's not something you need to replace every other day. But roughly once a year, you should change the filter and it doesn't cost a fortune. And it can produce about 12, 12 liters per hour. Now I'll show you how to install it. And the first thing you do is install the membrane. It's this blue one here, which can handle uh, 30,000 liters of water. You uh, take off this little blue one and feel free to come closer. This little blue piece. It's there to keep the tubes from coming apart. Press the little ring in and take the tube out because then you can just screw this on without any problems. Like that. Then you take the membrane. Insert it in. Push it all the way down. Screw the lid back on. and tighten it well. And there's this tool available if you need help with that, along with the accessories. There we go. And then you take this tube again and insert it into this hole here. Like that. Pull it out a little, and then you can insert this again so the tube doesn't come loose. There we go. Now the membrane is installed. This is what it looks like now. Now I'll connect it to the water so we can start using it. And the way it works is that we basically have our tap water right here. And essentially here we have our fitting piece and our little gasket in this setup. And uh, then, I've installed, then I've installed the gasket. That's pretty important to ensure it's sealed properly. Screw it on over here. Like that. And then it's really just a matter of following the flow. So the first one up here is water in. And for that, you use the white hose. Again, you remove the little blue one here. Just press it in and hold the button down. Then you can very slowly and carefully pull this one, this one out, like that. Take the white hose, insert it into the fitting, and push it all the way in. There we go. And insert it into here. OK. So what's it called? Then we take the one that's closest here. That's uh, the wastewater outlet. That means it's the contaminated water, the uh, also called sewage water. Pull this plug out again. And for the sewage water, you use the red hose again into the fitting. There we go. And then we get to the clean water, which comes out down here at the bottom. Again, remove the small blue one. And remove this plug. It can be a bit tricky, but once it's removed, you insert the blue hose here. There we go. So now this is disconnected. What you do next is rinse it through. 
It needs to operate for a slightly extended period of time so the membrane gets properly and thoroughly soaked and then it's ready for use. So at first, you just let regular water run through a bit longer. Slowly and steadily, you can see that now water is coming out of the blue one. So now the membrane and everything is starting to fill up. And then you can actually adjust the speed on this. That means you're increasing the pressure inside the reverse osmosis system. And that means you're reducing, uh, what's it called, the amount of wastewater and getting more clean water out. But on the other hand, the water also doesn't get quite as clean. So it's basically a choice you have to make. How clean do you want the water to be with this? The more you close this, the less wastewater and the more osmosis water you get. But then it's not quite as filtered and I can just try to show you that uh, afterwards. But, but look, that's the ratio. A bit more wastewater than clean water. Now I'm just going to turn off the water and then we can try to take some samples. We've now taken some samples with this reverse osmosis system and now we're going to use a TDS meter to measure what the original tap water is. It's that one. There we go. It reads 137. And then uh, we measure, what's it called? The least filtered one. It shows seven. And the second least filtered one it shows two. And the best filtered one in this case also shows two. So that means the two uh, most filtered waters are indeed the same as well. So run with as high a flow as possible to save some water. And then it's just a matter of when you're down to these types of water, adding the various minerals and salts so you can design uh, the water to match your exact recipe for the right type of beer. Happy brewing!